So James Cameron's a pretty revolutionary director, especially with what he's done with sequels. I mean, the movie most people generally disregard, he's been able to make not one, but two movies that are almost as good, if not better, than the original. This is not one of those movies. There were some movies, terrible movies, movies so awful, no one would touch. Then came a Matthew, sad little Matthew, Matthew decided these movies to watch. For every good movie, there's at least ten bad. Matthew gonna drag himself through the crap to find the worst ones around to be had. Today's episode, Alien 2 on Earth. Good morning, Internet. I'm called Matt, and welcome back to the second part of Sequel Month. Where today we're looking at Alien 2 on Earth. Alien 2 on Earth is the awkwardly titled fake sequel to the 1979 hit Alien, which is easily one of my top 10 favorite movies of all time. Unlike Shocking Dark, Alien 2 actually beat the real thing to theaters by about six years, dropping only a year after the original Alien. Hmm, I wonder if the production was rushed. The film comes to us from Italian writer Ciro Ippolito. And let me tell you, he's no Bruno Mattei. Ippolito has directed a few films, but he's not on the shitstorm level of Mattei. As with most Italian B-movies, the film stars a bunch of people who've never really done anything worth mentioning. So, the title once again. Yeah, these guys were sued too, but lucky for them, Alien is way too basic of a word to sue over. As a result, they briefly discussed making Alien 3. And guess who they considered to direct it? Terminator 2 Shocking Dark director Bruno Mattei. What I'm more concerned with is how awkward the title is. Alien on Earth could pass, in fact, had this been an official sequel, that'd be a really intriguing direction for the franchise to go. But Alien 2 on Earth is just weird to say. And weird to watch. Let's go. Oh wait, this is a restricted area. Uh, we're not allowed in here. Good thing I have a reckless disregard for the rules, eh? We got some out-of-focus stock footage, and... Testing, testing audio and video, one, two, three, one, two, three, okay? Um, I think you were supposed to cut that audio. Wow, totally not obvious where the stock footage ends and the actual footage begins. Um, these people clearly don't understand how blue screens are supposed to work. You want as solid a color as you can possibly get. All these shadows are going to make it look, well, like this. Or worse, like this. Then we cut to a terrible driver. Fucking douchebag, get out of the middle of the road! Incredible credits do, though. Some jazzy intro music. The person in the car is named Thelma. Th think you might have gotten the wrong Ridley Scott film there, guys. She's a scientist who studies caves. The perfect guest for a newscast about the space shuttle currently returning to Earth. Uh, I, I wonder, is her being a cave explorer gonna play into the plot later in the movie? Hmm. Hmm. And ooh, this dubbing work. Oh, well, say hello to them. <laughs> Anyway, Thelma gets asked how deep the cave she discovered is, and this really stresses her out. You know, Thelma's telepathic, and when something happens, she senses it, even at a distance. Oh, or we're going full Stephen King, and she's randomly psychic. Hope that comes back into play. Kinda. So instead of doing the interview she was already doing, she goes to the beach, where apparently her psychologist is. And he's a real smooth talker. You yourself create these monsters that are frightening you. So what do I do? Nothing. Keep them to yourself as the rest of us do. Aw, oh, you can do better than that. If it happens again, what am I supposed to do? Uh, look, it's getting late and I've got to go. Sorry, honey. <laughs> yeah, g good one. Then they go bowling. Something critical to the Alien franchise. They don't spend too long on this, which is nice, but they could have spent no time on it. So there's that. 
Then, for no real reason, while her boyfriend is in the store, she gets out and goes to the beach, and he tells her to come back. Then we find a kid moving water from one side of the ocean to another, who discovers a mysterious blob. Hey you, with the face! <laughs> oh, never mind. Now, when the frog man opened the capsule, there was no trace of the astronauts, who only 40 minutes before had reported that everything was A-OK. -okay. You're listening to KXPS Exposition Radio, your number one source for easy exposition. One of the crew members finds one of the strange blue rocks, but no time for that. We gotta get to the most weirdly jazzy gearing up montage ever. Fine. And they're off to explore a cave. Oh god, is this gonna turn into the descent? Don't worry, this movie is much more interesting than the descent. And then an MTV music video starts. you always type by candlelight? It's also convenient. Convenient? Because everything I write is such garbage. And it burns in an instant. A sentiment the writers of this film failed to share. Good system, huh? <laughs> yes! <laughs> Until you drop a flaming piece of paper on me, you half-wit. Why is he even bothering to write on this mission? Seems like an inconvenient time. Things get weird, though, as the strange blue rock starts moving before attacking one of the Spelunkers. Ah, but it seems the one who was attacked is actually still alive. Tried she had on a helmet. Ah, yes. Helmets. That's what's gonna protect you from aliens. Then they're taking her. And they're taking her. And they're- Jesus Christ, guys. Editing at its finest, folks. Yeah, Alien was not shy of some slow moments, but they had an established tone and an established threat. So the slow moments were building to something and made them feel more unnerving. Fucking finally we get a face burster scene. Congratulations, Alien 2. You successfully ripped off the thing you claimed to be ripping off. <laughs> it almost never happened. Good work, my friend. Very hard to do. Actually, the scene kind of ramps up after this. Enough that they run away from where they are. But now they have nowhere to run and have to go back for their supplies. Only to find the pieces of the dead body are still moving. That's... kinda cool. If you're into that. Ah! Ah! It's me! <laughs> Why did he scream? She just put her hand on him. And they get in and out of there with no problem. Stop. The suspense is too much. Yeah, put your greasy hands all over those stalagmites. Not like that's the first thing they tell you not to do when you go into a cave. <laughs> Woo! Facehuggers going to the next level. Oh, never mind, it was a non-issue. Again. You know, this is surprisingly well lit for a cave that's supposed to be underground. Oh yeah, man. This is a really good beat. DRM, this is a straight up disc in your content. ID, ID, this? But uh-oh, the cave is alive! Then it cuts away, cuts back, and she's covered in blood. What caused this? Who knows? Try to concentrate on Cliff. Guide him. I can't. How convenient. It took 50 minutes for that power to actually be useful and you can't use it. Alright, since apparently this needs to be said, Storytelling 101. Remove everything that has no relevance to the story. This happens in every movie I review. I will not be addressing this again. Then one of the dead crew members shows up, but they realize it's an alien. You know, the power that the aliens have had this whole movie. Very well established. This makes perfect sense. You're not Cliff! You're not! You're not! You're not! Did I accidentally put in Kentucky Fried Movie because 
That's the only place where that performance could be even remotely acceptable. Although, I'd probably be enjoying this better if it was Kentucky Fried Movie. They just went full scanners on us. And I think this came out before scanners. So Thelma and this Greg Sestero looking dude get the hell out of Dodge. And wow, after running around in that cave for hours, they're right next to their car. They drive off, but stop to inform a policeman of what happened. They gotta be around somewhere. Yeah, he couldn't possibly have been killed by aliens. They make it to town, and yo, maybe don't give the cameraman so much coffee. Or, you know, give him a tripod. It seems everywhere they go, all signs of life have been wiped out. Oh wait, there's someone in this car here. They start driving and everything. You'd think in a real crisis they wouldn't be waiting at a red light. Ooh, nice alien perspective shot. I'm sure that's not at all covering up the fact that you didn't have an alien costume made for this film. Because, you know, the alien is never seen on screen. Then the alien eats the boyfriend, and Thelma is left as the only human on Earth. To be fair though, they kind of beat the Alien franchise to the punch with this one, as this is very similar to Alien Resurrections, the alternate ending. But it's an ending even one of the bad Alien movies knew to cut out, so take that how you will. I don't know if it's just because the last movie I reviewed was so terrible, but I found this movie pretty chill. It's something easy to put on and just tune out. Granted, chill is probably the wrong tone for a supposed horror movie, but I mean, come on. Plenty of beach footage and smooth jazz. Would I recommend this film? Eh, probably not. It's got a few kind of funny moments, but mostly it's just dull. One of the biggest problems with this film is it's hard to keep track of who's still alive because outside of Thelma, none of these characters were given an introduction. Honestly, like Terminator 2 Shocking Dark, the funniest thing is the title. It is, rather fortunately, more watchable than Terminator 2 Shocking Dark, though. And much easier to find an official DVD of. That's all I got, so until next time, I'm Matt, and this is Matt's Fun Time Bad Movie Show. Genuine question, is that part where the girl turns around and has no face, did someone else find that funny or am I just really fucked up?